James chapter 4. It feels good, by the way. <laughs> Amen. I've, uh, I've enjoyed church today. Amen. Just a blessing and a joy to be here. Amen. James chapter 4, <clears throat> I think this is what I want. Yeah, James chapter 4, preached out of this ver uh, chapter last week, I guess it was, and uh, preached um, verse uh, 14 and 15 there, 13 down to the end of the chapter there, about what is your life. And uh, so, um, we're only going to read a few verses from this uh, chapter tonight, and then we'll get right to... Uh, Right to the sermon. Let's look here. Let's look. Uh, we'll just start at verse 1. We won't read the whole chapter, but we'll start at verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members? <coughs> Excuse me. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have. And cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Um, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain, The Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy, but he, that he, but he giveth more grace? Wherefore you saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. I want to preach out of verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. All right, verse 7 says there, verse 7 says, <clears throat> Submit yourselves, therefore, uh, to God. I just want to preach on a simple subject <clears throat> that you don't hear a whole lot of preaching on it, I guess, as far as a sermon, and that is the subject of submission. The subject of submission. Now, <clears throat> what, what does uh, the word submit to mean? I'm sure you've probably got a pretty good idea. But, but the word means this, to submit means to let down. This is an old uh, 1828 Webster's Dictionary, which is, if you don't have one, you should get one. And uh, it says, to let down, to cause, to sink, or lower. That's the first definition. The second definition is this, to yield, to yield, resign, or surrender to the power, will, or authority of another. <clears throat> we'll be dealing with that definition, <clears throat> if you will, to yield, resign, or surrender to the power, will, or authority of another. And then there's, there's a third definition, and I guess this would come into play. It says to yield, but then it doesn't stop there, and it says without murmuring. To yield without murmuring. <laughs> that's, I guess that's where the rubber meets the road right there. To yield without murmuring. Now, I, I, um, I'll say this. Um, the word submit, submission, submitted, those kind of words, anything to do with the word, any form of that word, it shows up uh, no less than 30 times in the Bible. 30 times. One form or another. <clears throat> uh, 20 times in the New Testament, 10 in the Old. 20 times in the New Testament, 10 in the Old. I believe this. I believe that uh, the right kind of submission for a, uh, for a Christian is key, is a key part or is a major part of, of a victorious Christian life. You've got to learn to be submitted uh, to God. Now that sounds, I guess, simple, but... Sometimes that's not always easy to do. Uh, you've got to be, learn to be, in other words, to learn to be submitted to God, you better learn how to bend. 
You better learn how to bend. I'm not talking about compromise. I'm talking about bending. You better learn how to bend a little bit. Someone gave the illustration about them palm trees down uh, south and in the tropical areas when those hurricanes blow through them palm trees just do this. And they blow. And then when the wind stops, they stand up or whatever. And then they blow again. (laughs) And they do this. They lean over. They bend with the wind. You know the wind's type of the Holy Spirit. You take, you take the hardwoods, like a mighty oak and these kind of trees up here, these, what do you call them, deciduous trees? I forget what they call them up here. Even some of the, what do they call them, coniferous trees and some of the pines, the hard winds blows, it'll snap them because there's no bend. You better learn in this Christian life how to submit and how to bend. And uh, the longer I go, the more I'm learning about that subject. (laughs) You know, when you're young, you think, well, bless God, it's this way. And then the Lord will allow a little something to come in there, and it's just kind of like it's not quite that way. And you want to, and all the while, the Lord's just trying to get you to bend a little bit. You need some of that. Need some of that. I guess the first thought when you want to preach on or try to preach on uh, submission, I guess the first thought would be uh, toward uh, the wives in many people's minds. But, and the Bible does talk about this, and we'll look at it just briefly here. Matter of fact, uh, take your Bible, turn to Ephesians 5. We'll just look at the two references on it, and I'm going to give you two references on it with, uh, with uh, reason. But look in Ephesians 5. Uh, Some men love to quote the verse uh, to their husbands. Or, excuse me. (laughs) Wow. That was bad. Some men love to quote the verse to their wives. Their wives, I'll say that again. I'll say that again to their wives. You can edit that out, brother. Uh, But... um, they love to quote the verse to their wives and use it as a, a, a rod and beat them with it, if you will. And, uh, but that, and that's wrong. Amen. That's just wrong. But the, it is in the Bible here, verse 22, Ephesians 5, 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, your own husbands, as, notice it says, as unto the Lord. <coughs> and they really want to... Some guys want to put emphasis on that, as unto the Lord. Listen, you ain't the Lord. Amen. Get that down in your heart right now. You ain't God, okay? You are flesh, and you are a sinner just like she is. And um, as unto the Lord. And, but it does say, wives, submit yourselves unto the Lord. I think I've told you about it, but I'll tell it to you again because I like to hear the story. Um, I did a wedding one time, and... Um, uh, during the wedding vows, that, that part of the, the wedding vows for the, uh, for the ladies, I always like to include that. I mean, if you're saved, I mean, that whole picture of a marriage, uh, even uh, uh, throughout your marriage and all that, your marriage as two saved people, that ought to picture the, the bride, the church, and the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. It ought to replicate that. It ought to mirror that. It ought to point uh, to that. It, that relationship ought to be typical of that relationship that Jesus Christ has with His bride. That's the whole idea of the chapter part of it. But, <clears throat> but nonetheless, and so I like to, and even when I talk to these ladies uh, before they get married, you know, we'll sit down and talk most of the time, about 99% of the time, I like to sit down and talk with them. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll tell that young lady, I'll say, now look at that man right there. And she'll kind of look at me and smile. <laughs> I said, no, look at him. Look at him. Can you submit to him? <laughs> I mean, look past all of the ooey-gooey, whatever. Oh, he's so... Look past that. I mean, look past his puppy dog eyes and... All those things, amen, and that sweet talk that he does to you. Look past all that. Can you submit to him? 
And look at the verse. Wives, submit yourselves unto the husband as unto the Lord. Can you submit to him? That's not to say that a woman is lesser than a man and lesser of a human being and all that, but God has an order in the home. God has an order in the home. We'll talk more about that probably next week in Sunday school and all those kind of things as far as the, uh, the man and the husband and the, and the woman and the wife and all that. You realize, you realize ladies, all these feminists and all this stuff, don't fall, don't fall for that garbage. Don't fall for that trash. And it's not, it's not this, uh, you know, male chauvinist uh, attitude and all that kind of stuff. Uh, God made that woman, but He made that woman for that man. Ouch. Amen. Now, if you can't submit to Him and follow His lead, and He's supposed to lead. Amen. He's supposed to lead. And you say, well, he won't lead. I can't follow him. Not. Well, then you better think twice about marrying him. Of course, we're all married here, I think, unless you're not you know, of age and all that. I mean, some of them, but uh, find you a good one. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but uh, still, nonetheless, but notice what it says. I, I ask him, I say, can you, can you submit to him? And sometimes, you know, and I'll make her answer me most of the time. Yes or no? Well, Hey, this ain't 50-50. Preacher, you're stepping in. No, I'm not. I'm giving you what God said. It's 100-100. But that husband is the head, and Christ is the head of him. Amen. Now, I know there's all kinds of circumstances and scenarios, and that's why... That's why uh, the Lord tells the believer not to marry the unbeliever. How is a woman going to marry an unbelieving man and submit to him as unto the Lord? You're asking for a mess. Come to Colossians chapter 3. But at the same time here, let's compare Scripture with Scripture and see what he says here in Colossians 3. Notice verse 18. Paul's on the same uh, track here. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. No, as it is fit in the Lord. You've got a guy who wants to send his, an unbelieving man wants to send his, or even a saved man for that matter, wants to send the wife down. Uh, you know, a Bible-believing Christian loves God, trying to serve Him, send Him down to the grocery store and buy Him a a 12-pack of beer. Well, she's got to submit to me. No, she don't. That's not fit in the Lord. Amen. Amen. You better think about that. Amen. Amen. But at the same time, see, that's not to say that, you know, you can stand up and get in somebody's face and all that kind of stuff. You ought to read over there, First and Second Peter over there, how that woman is supposed to behave herself. I have never understood that anyway, why a woman, I'm getting off track here, but I'll say it since we're on it. Why in the world would a woman want to get up in the face of a man and, and dare him to hit her? Now, he's got no business hitting her, but ladies, don't do that. You're asking for it. Amen? I'm not condoning it, okay? I'm not saying it's okay. I'm saying when you push a man like that, I mean, you're just, if he don't walk away, you're liable to catch it right where it counts. Yeah. Why? Because that's just in him. I'm not saying it's right, that's wrong. But Lord, God have mercy, don't provoke the man that way. Amen. All right, and we're getting way deep in now, ain't we? Nonetheless, uh, that's kind of the first thought. Well, since we mentioned it, turn to First Peter. We'll just get it all while we're going to get it, you know. Let's just jump in, amen. We're going to jump. Let's don't tiptoe and try to sneak our way in the pool. Just jump in. First Peter chapter 3, look at verse 1. Likewise... Ye wives, be in subjection, that means submissive, amen, 
Likewise, likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Just sounds just like Paul, doesn't it? That if any obey not the word, they also, that's an unbelieving husband there, or somebody that's not obeying the word, they also may without the word be one, looks like he's an unbeliever there, by the conversation of the wives. That conversation can be verbally and her life, her living. In the Bible, conversation there, it can be the same thing. can be. Verse 2, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning, let it not be that, uh, that, outward, that outward adorning of plaiting the hair, of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden men of the heart in that which is uh, corruptible, uh, not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Well, that's a tough one, isn't it? Hey, ladies, I'll be honest with you. I, I would have a hard time with, with that. I really would. Well, of course, I'm a man, but a man has a desire to rule. I would have a hard time uh, it comes to a decision for the home and all that, and you know for a fact or you think he's wrong and that kind of stuff, and he says, no, we're going to go this way. Well, wait a minute. I like what the old preacher said, just seek the Lord on him. A verse, a uh, verse. Uh, saying comes to mind, uh, must, we must learn to move men through prayer. And that's not to say, men, that you're to, to push her around and, and all that, and use your, abuse your authority. Man, that's your wife, for crying out loud. I don't, I, don't, I don't get that with some of these guys. And trying to, and, you know, and, and, and don't pay any attention to what she has to say. Man, you picked her for a wife, for a, for a help me for the rest of your life. You better value what she says. Amen. You should, if you think she's got any brains at all. Amen. All right, verse 5. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Gives indication that's an adornment. What's that? Being in subjection. Now, it may sound like it, but I'm not going to preach on ladies and wives and all that tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Too late. But I said that to say that is the first thought that comes to mind with some of that stuff. All right. Uh, the Bible does talk about here in 1 Peter 5, I think it's verse 5, that the younger is to submit themselves unto the elder. Boy, that's an old-fashioned thing, isn't it? The younger is to submit themselves unto the elder. Somebody older than you, show them some respect. Submit yourself. You better learn how to bend. You better learn how to bend even if that elder is wrong. You better just, no, just keep your mouth shut. You don't have to correct them. Amen. You better learn how to submit. And now what the Bible says to do. Now I know there's places, and I'm not I'm talking about it in a general thing here. The younger, well, look at it. We're in 1 Peter 5 here. 1 Peter 5, 5. Read the verse. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. You know what that takes? That takes some humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. We read something very similar to this over in James already in chapter 4 there. About this humbleness of mind and God resisting the proud. We talked about it uh, last Wednesday night. Only by pride cometh contention. That younger man thinks he knows better all the time. He's going to correct the old man. You better be careful with that. You better be careful with that. He's been around a little while, so maybe seen a few more things than you. Had a few more conversations than you. The younger uh, is to submit to the elder. And uh, if you have to, just take a little bit. It won't hurt you. Amen? So what do you mean? Just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Amen. Submit. Submit. Bend a little. All right, let's go a little further here. Um, 
Well, we're in 1 Peter. Come to 1 Peter chapter 2. Maybe we should have preached out of 1 Peter. Come to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, notice verse 13. Here's a, here's a tough one. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. You ever live in a community where they have a stupid ordinance? And you go, this is dumb. I ain't doing it. Well, why not? You violating God's word if you, if you, if you keep the ordinance? Probably not. Amen. Well, I just think it's stupid. Well, so what? You decided to live there. Amen. Isn't this a pleasant Christmas message tonight? <laughs> Submit to the Scrooge. <laughs> Amen. But that's what he says there. He's talking to Christians. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Now, how will that look? You're a professing Christian. You've got a scripture sign in your yard, on your car, whatever the case may be. Or maybe you don't even have that. But yeah, you can't even keep a simple ordinance. And you're going to try to witness to your neighbor? He might look at you as a rebel. Amen. I'm going to tell him my wife. I can do that because I'm up here. We went into Myers the other night. We was doing some last-minute shopping, grocery shopping, and all that stuff. And uh, I had a mask in my pocket or somewhere. I had one. We got out of the car, and I looked at her, and I said, you don't have your mask. She said, I ain't wearing one. I don't have one, so I ain't wearing one. Okay, you want to be a rebel? Be a rebel. So I put my mask on. She said, I ain't wearing no mask. Okay, you be a rebel. I ain't saying I always wear one either, so. <laughs> yeah. But we walk in, and uh, there's a man standing there, tall black man, and he's, he's the greeter. And he says, you know, he's got his mask on. He says, How y'all doing tonight? And I said, We're doing good. <laughs> and she smiled. I don't know if she said anything or not. And we went right on past him. Here he come. He had a mask. And he said, ma'am, you got to wear a mask. <laughs> then he went on to tell us about this. He said, and when you get done with it, you get out in the parking lot, just throw it down. He said, we got some guy out here. He's picking them all up, and he's collecting them for the Holocaust. <laughs> That's what we said. What? We just kind of, okay, and just made our way. Let's get to the bread aisle, quick. <laughs> But, I mean, you think about that. Here you come. Now, you say, you're grasping at straws. No, I'm not. Maybe it's a simple thing, and I know it is. You're going to go through that line and give somebody a track? Look at you, and you go, you a Christian? Yeah. How come you don't have a mask on? It's a simple rule. Oh, I can feel it, man. Oh, I'm the same way. I don't wear no stupid mask. I don't always wear it. I'm just saying. That's, a, that's what you call an ordinance. Right? <laughs> now, don't come up to me after church and say, well, if you was doing that, you'd do all these, all these. Other. Don't, don't, okay? <laughs> we got hand sanitizer stations out there. Get you a squirt, squirt. Out the door you go, all right? Amen. I'm just simply saying, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. That's Bible. So much for that militant Christian, huh? I'm all for that. Don't get me wrong tonight. All right, that one went over like a lead balloon, so let's go a little further. Come to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13. I don't like this one at all. Hebrews chapter 13. And notice with me verse 17. Just giving you a few here tonight. We'll get back to James in just a minute. 
two things here. I kept you too long this morning and tried to let you go here a decent time. I say that a lot, and I'm really trying. I am. I'm trying. and just, <clears throat> just having a hard time with that. I need to submit a little bit better there, I guess. <laughs> Hebrews 13, look at verse 17. Don't pay no attention to the back corner over here. <laughs> verse 17, you need this verse back there. <laughs> Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that's me, hmm, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable uh, for you. Now, that's not to say that I am going to come into your house and tell you, you whether you can have a Christmas tree or not. I don't care if you do or you don't. That's your business. That is none of my business. We were standing in my house the other day, and my oldest son was standing there, and he looked and he said, Huh, you got a Christmas tree. I said, Yeah, I kind of like it. <laughs> Only problem is, I like it when they have lights on it. And we don't have no lights on it. I'm kind of like, just take it down. It's what, you know, I want lights on it. I want to see the lights. I'm not interested in the tree. I want to see the lights. But that's none of my business to come to your house and say, you wicked thing. You, you got a Christmas tree. It's a stinking bell pole. You're a heathen pagan. That's not my place. Amen. Amen. The only authority I have is spiritual. I can't, tell you how, I can't tell you how to raise your kids. Amen. And we've all heard about stories, I guess we all have, a lot of us have, about preachers that, and pastors that try to usurp the authority of God or usurp the authority of the man in that home. You're out of place if you do. That's not your place. That's God's place and that's the man's place. Not the pastor's place, right? Uh, and those kind of things. Although, now listen, you know as well as I do, God set up the church and he sets the pastor up as the head of it. I don't like preaching on this stuff because I'm that guy. And it makes it look like, you know, bless God, you're under my thumb. That's not what I'm saying. But there is an order there and somebody has to be in charge. We don't have a panel of elders, we have a pastor, one. Amen? And that's how it's going to be as long as I'm here. <laughs> yeah, amen. And if you do have an elder or a pastor or a panel of elders or pastors or whatever, it's like I said before, give it time. Eventually, one guy there is going to surface as the, the point man. That's the pastor. <laughs> amen. So what are you talking about? Well, there's some churches, they don't believe in having a pastor and that you submit yourself to, that, uh, to the Lord in that church and then under the leadership of that pastor. And so therefore they have more than one. They have ten elders. They call them elders. They don't call them pastors. They'll have ten of them. And they'll have 30 people in the whole church. That ain't a church. That's a club. Amen. I ain't even trying to be funny, but that's what it is. And uh, when you get somebody that comes into a church and they don't want to submit under the leadership of that local pastor in that church, I don't care if it's Baptist or whatever it is, he's wrong. He's wrong. You Listen, even if you're a Bible-believing, King James, straight down the line, you go to another church and they're not quite like, don't go in there and cause problems for that preacher. You don't agree with him, get out! Amen. It will cause problems and that kind of stuff and strifes and divisions. Then leave. Amen. Find out where God wants you. Otherwise, shut up and submit. Well, that's just too straight across the plate there, wasn't it? All right, but that's what he says there. Obey them that have the rule uh, over you. Uh, this business of submission. Come back to James here. 
make this statement. I don't know if I should, but I'm going to uh, in James here. But this business of submission, you'll find it uh, all throughout Paul's epistles. As a matter of fact, you read the book of Philemon, and Paul there wins Onesimus to the Lord. He, he finds him in a prison. Onesimus was a runaway slave. And Paul wins him to the Lord, and he finds out that he's, he's, uh, he's the servant or the slave under Philemon. Philemon, whatever, whatever you want to call his name there, Philemon. And he, so he writes to him. It's only one chapter, and he writes to him. And, um, and, and what he does is he, he's seeking the, the, the permission and the mind of uh, Philemon. But on, when you read that chapter, you read where Paul sends that young man back. You know what he says? You go submit. That's what he's telling him. You go submit to your master. Ouch. In 2020, you're going to talk that way? That's what it says. The first time you read about a word, the word submit of any kind at all that shows up in your Bible, you know where it shows up? It shows up with a man named Abraham and a woman named Sarah and a a servant or a slave named Hagar. And uh, Hagar's mistress, Sarah, begins to treat her roughly. And she runs away. And she's out there, and you know the story, sent away and all that stuff. And she's out there, and the angel of the Lord meets her, and he says, go back and submit. (laughs) Interesting. Now, I'll say something. The Bible does not condemn servants and that, that kind of business and slaves and all that. The Bible doesn't condemn that in that, in that respect. It regulates it. It regulates it. Well, there's a thought. Now, I know how that is in today's world. I say something like that. Boy, I, I'm, I'm, and am I qualified for president or what? You know? I mean, they'll just bust stone you over something like that. And um, anyway, I'll throw it out there. There it is. You can chew on some of that. All right, we're back here in James. But this business of submission, the Bible is constantly, constantly uh, pointing to that business of submit, submit, submit. The flesh does not want to submit. It will fight it. It will fight it. You have to bring it down. And sometimes I wonder if that's why sometimes it seems like a lot of ladies uh, 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 are closer to God than a lot of men are. Because they're dealing with that thing all the time if they're married and got any kind of training at all. They're constantly putting that flesh down. Constantly putting that flesh down. Maybe, maybe not. But you understand what I'm saying. If you're going to get close to God, in that chapter over there, he's talking, James, in this chapter here, he's talking about in the next couple of verses there, draw nigh to God, in verse 8 there. It's awful hard to draw nigh to God if you don't submit to Him. I know all the business of temptation and the devil and all that stuff. I ain't going to deal with that tonight. The victory over temptation and all that. The key of it is submitting. Then you can resist. Without submission to God first, you can't resist the devil. Awful hard. Submission has to come first. If you're going to get victory over the flesh, you're going to have to submit to God first. Has to be there. It's got to be in that order. Over any sin, any circumstance, you're going to submit. What's God's way? What's God's method? What's God's will? What is the mind of God on this matter? You're going to have to submit to God's way. And sometimes the flesh will crawl and scream and kick and fight and buck and carry on because they don't want to submit. That's in all of us. All right, now, I got one point tonight. That's my introduction. I got one point and three subpoints. So what's your first point? My first point is exactly what it says there. Submit to God. That's your first point? That's my first point tonight. 
submit to God. What we do in 2020 under Joe Biden? We submit to God. That's what we do. We submit to God. And we go forward. <laughs> Amen. Now I know, I, I know we're not in China. I thank God we're not, but what if you were? You know what they do? You know what they do over there? And I know, listen, maybe I should address it. You get that business over there. Uh, Peter says, honor the king and all that stuff. And talks about all that submission and stuff over there in his epistle. Uh, but then you read over there in Acts and all that stuff where they said, you can't preach in his name anymore. If you do, we're going we're gonna to beat you. And he says, we would obey God rather than men. Okay? If you've got an ordinance that's against, directly against the word of God, go with the word of God. Now, I'm not saying you roll over and play dead, okay? I'm not saying that tonight. But in, in light of the Scripture, where you should submit, then you should. Amen. Amen? Amen. All right, now, number one, submit to God. Now, how do I submit to God? I mean, you just, how, how do you do that? Uh, how do you, how do I, I mean, how do I daily submit to God? How do I, I got this problem, you say submit to God, draw nighty. how do I do that? All right, number one, you're going to have to submit to the Word of God. You're going to have to submit to the Word of God. Now that's very simple, isn't it? You're going to have to submit to the Word of God and understand that it is the final authority. And as Dr. Sam Gipp would say, it is the final authority, authority excuse me, in all matters of faith and practice. You need to determine that in your heart. Whatever God says, and that blessed old book, amen, it's law. I'm going to submit by the grace of God. If God says it, I'm going to submit by the grace of God. If the Holy Spirit points something out to me in that book by the grace of God, I'll submit. You're going to have to determine that. How do I submit to God? You submit to God's Word. You cannot separate the two. It is an impossibility to separate the two. If you violate or break God's Word, you've gone against God. There's no... You can't get around that. Alright, so you're going to have to submit to the Word of God. In order to submit to the Word of God, you're going to have to find out what it says. That stands the reason, doesn't it? I'll give you another plug again tonight. Those calendars are still back there on the table. If you haven't gotten one, get one. Amen. So what is that? That's my Christmas, mine and her Christmas gift to the church. Get you one. Church didn't pay for them. We did. It's not this. It's just saying, hey, thanks for everything. It's small, but we appreciate you and appreciate your prayers. Amen. And, and, and I thought, well, what better gift than to get them geared toward the Bible? Because when you get somebody in the Bible, God can do something. You get a man in the Word of God, God can do something with that. You got a fellow, saw him just the other day, maybe a week or two ago. I used to meet with him every, uh, every week. And he'd been going through his Bible, reading his Bible, going through it. And he'd have questions. And I'd uh, been going through that book and going through that book and going through that book. Hadn't made it all the way through yet, but going through that book. And I'm thinking, why don't you just come to church? And he's got some issues or whatever and this and that and the other. And I don't want to say too much because I'm hoping that he comes one of these days. But I know this. If he's in that book, I'll guarantee you God's going to speak to him. God will deal with him. God will do something. Brother Joe Fall not here, they're out of town. He's got a guy he's been dealing with. Some of you may have told you about some of it, uh, the fellow. And, and he's been going through his Bible consistently, regularly, been reading it. First time the guy's ever read his Bible through. And Joe, Joe's after him and saying, well, why don't you just come to church? Man, you know, I mean, God will open some stuff up to you, man. It'll be a blessing to you. Just come to church. And he's frustrated. And I say, hey, man, I don't know how you feel. He told me the other day, he said, hey, so-and-so called me. Guess what he said? I said, what did he say? He said, man, he said the Lord been dealing with him about coming to church. Amen. 
See? That book. You've got you've to submit to the Word of God. That thing will help you, and I know I'm, maybe I'm preaching to the choir tonight, and you've heard this preaching over and over and over and over again and all that kind of stuff, but a daily dose of that, a regular dose, a regular weekly dose, whatever, however schedule you can work out of that book will help you tremendously spiritually in your everyday life. Amen. Unbelievable what God will do. Amen. Unbelievable how God will point a verse out and say, that's what you need right there, boy, Amen. that verse right there. Amen. I've seen them do it. Whether it's a rebuke, whether it's a reproof, whether it's an edification or exhortation, whether it's a comfort, whatever it is, God knows exactly what you need at the right time. And if you consistently go through that, He'll point that thing out and say right there, bam. Chew on that one, son. Rest your head on that promise right there, son. Amen. You're going to have to learn how to submit to the Word of God. Don't skip, don't skip the chapters you don't like. Amen. Don't skip Chronicles. Don't skip the first few chapters of Chronicles. You might find your name in there. You never know. <laughs> don't skip Leviticus. Man. There's some, there's some tough passages. I mean, you, you read about some of that stuff back there in Numbers, and you're thinking, why are we numbering the spoons? You know? Why are we numbering the bowls? Who cares? God does. It's called the book of Numbers. They're setting up the poles and the, the pomegranate and the loop and the, what do you call it, the... Uh, Sockets and all that stuff, and you're going, that, what's going on here? And they're numbering all that stuff. Yeah, the bell and pomegranate and all those things and setting up all this stuff. And it's got to be badger skin, dyed red, and all this kind of thing. You know, what, a, what a contraption this is. Well, you'll be going along, and the Lord will stick a verse right in the middle of that stuff. And it'll ring your bell. And you'll go, I never saw that before. Man, that's good. Yeah, right in the middle of the tabernacle. <laughs> You're going to have to submit to the Word of God. All right, let me move on. There's some other things I could say there. But uh, number, I guess, uh, secondly, about submitting to God, you not only have to submit to the Word of God, but you're going to have to submit to the will of God. You cannot know the will of God apart from the Word of God. Maybe this is kind of overlapping, interwoven, that kind of thing. But Paul the Apostle, you read in Acts 16, 6, that he's forbidden of the Holy Ghost to go into a certain area. If you want to know the will of God, listen, Paul submitted himself in the area of the service of God. He submitted himself. He brought himself under submission. I know he went to Jerusalem and shouldn't have went and all that kind of thing. That's about the only time, the only place where you'll find probably where Paul messed up. But for the most part, the Lord said, go here, he went there. Don't go there, he wouldn't go there, except for that. But most of the time, you know what you find him doing? You find him submitting to the Lord in service. In service. You ever pray about where you go? I mean, we're, we're, we're servants of Jesus Christ, aren't we not? You ever watch a, you ever watch a well-trained dog? He won't do anything without his master's command. That's a beautiful thing to me. We got a dog, we thought we'd get a smart one. She's not all that smart. She's pretty smart for a dog, but she's a little goofy at times around people. So if you come to my house and the dog's there, don't reach out to pet her. Just act like she's not there and she'll ignore you. She may growl at you, but she probably won't bite you unless you reach for her. <laughs> if you, there you go. <laughs> if you reach for her, 
<laughs> Eric can testify. Brother Eric can testify to that. She might just kind of like, you know, don't touch me. <laughs> but uh, most of the time, I can, I can, I can tell her, you know, what to do, and she'll do it. Most of the time. Uh, so what is that? She submitted. Shot collar does wonders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm the old time, and I'm not mean to animals, so and all that. But I mean, you walk down in the driveway, at least when we're home anyway, to the mailbox, and uh, stop in front of the gate, and she's right there. And I said, "I'll sit down and stay." She'll sit down, and she'll sit there until I come back. <laughs> well, when I got to looking at that dog one day, and I thought, "I wish I was like that with God." You know? Birdie, stop! And she stops. All I got is, ah, 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 ah. Come on. Here she comes. I can whistle. Come on. And here she comes. In a heartbeat. Almost in a heartbeat. I wish I was like that with God. God said, move now. Move. Stop right there. Stop. All right, now, move again. Move again. All right, stop right there. You know, he knows best. We're kind of, where we live now, we're kind of like, do we go here to the grocery? Do we go here? Do we go here? We got got options. They're all about the same distance. So it's kind of like, I got to thinking. I got to thinking, you know, okay, maybe we should, uh, before we go, why don't we just say, okay, Lord, where you want us to go? Is there anybody there? That you want to get a track to, or yeah. we talk, that's just a little simple thing. Just be submissive to whatever, whatever God says. Amen. Paul was submissive in the service of God. Secondly, concerning the will of God, he was submissive to the suffering of God. I said, of God. And you know the reference there, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Paul's talking about his thorn. <clears throat> and he's talking about glorying and infirmities. And you know what Paul did? He accepted it. He accepted it. He finally comes to the place, Lord, take the thorn. No, Paul, you ain't taking it. Lord, would you please take this thorn? I said, no, I'm not going to take it. My grace is sufficient for you. Lord, one more time, is there any way possible you can just remove this thorn. I could do so much more. I could be so much more effective. I could be... No, I'm not. My grace is sufficient for you. Well, amen, Lord. Amen. You got a thorn? I don't know. Some people have thorns. They never, 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 you know, a lot of people sometimes don't even know about it. But can you be submissive in that? In that, wife's been reading Corey Ten Boone in the Hiding Place. She came to a section today and said, "Man, these ladies are something else." Corey and her sister Betsy. I won't go through the whole thing. Obviously, was in Holland there when Holland fell to Germany in World War II. And they were hiding, if you know the story, they were hiding Jews in their house. Those two sisters and their father, their mother died. They were saved people, raised in a home where their father read the Bible to them every night. I mean, I'm not saying wealthy or that kind of stuff, but proper, holy living ladies. I mean, ladies. Not tramps, ladies. And they get thrown into a Nazi prison camp and stripped. Time for inspection. Take your clothes off. And they make them strip down to nothing. And they're walking through that line. They're walking through that line and Corey is following her sister Betsy. And she leans forward and she says, Our Savior was naked when he went up Calvary's hill. 
And her, and her sister Betsy leans back and he says, yes, yes. And so we should thank God for this. You know what that is? That's called submitting to suffering in the perfect will of God. <laughs> Story goes on. I may have it out of order. It's fresh in my mind. We was talking about it tonight on the way here going to the prison cell, and they lay down on a cot, and the cot begins to move. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get off that cot. That's, it's infested with fleas. <laughs> wow. Only place to lay down is infested with fleas. Fleas biting them all over them. And her sister Betsy says, well, we should thank God for the fleas too. And Miss Corey was, was of, the, of the mind of, <laughs> not me. This is ridiculous. And kind of mildly rebuked her. And, and uh, Betsy said, no, we're to give thanks in all things. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now we should thank God for the fleas. i will make you feel about that big. I don't have anything to complain about tonight. God forgive me, amen. All for hiding, hiding some Jews. That woman would get her Bible, they'd smuggle the Bibles in. Try to smuggle those Bibles in. Put that Bible in a, sa a satchel, tie it to a string, put it around her neck, drop it down the back of her blouse. Coming through the inspections where they're patting them down. And she's thinking, oh no, they're going to find it. They're going to find it. Oh no, they're going to find it. God, you've got me through before. I don't know how you're going to do it this time. She gets up there in line and her sister is being patted down on all that kind of stuff. And she walks up there, Miss Corey does, and stops and hesitates. And nobody touches her. Nobody pats her down. And finally the guard said, move along, you're holding up the line. Bring the Bible right on in. Yeah. Can you submit to the will of God in sufferings? I, that's a, that, you say, well, that's high ground, preacher. Amen. I agree with you. I say amen. But you better learn how to submit. I don't know what God's going to do with us here in America before he comes. I don't know. I'm hoping he gets us out of here tonight. Amen. That'd be fine with me. I'm not one of these guys looking to be a martyr. <laughs> I don't like pain of any kind. Amen. I'm one of these guys that rarely get a headache. And what I do is like, oh, killing me. Yeah, I don't like pain. I don't like it. But you know what Paul did? He accepted it. He submitted. He said, all right, Lord. If that's what you want, if it's for your glory, amen. All right, number three, try to wind up here. Number three, we're talking about submitting to God. You're going to have to submit to the Word of God. You're going to have to submit to the will of God. And you're going to have to submit to the ways of God. Now, that's very close to the will of God, but I believe it's a, just, just a tick, a shade different. The ways of God. In Isaiah 55, verse 8, God says, My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. They're much higher. You read about his ways in Judges chapter 2, verse 22, in 2 Kings 21, 22. And it has to do with, with uh, the ways of the Lord and keeping the laws and those kind of things. You read about it in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 4. They were ignorant of the ways of the Lord. They were poor and foolish, spiritually speaking. Take your Bible and come with me to Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. You can't know the ways of God if you're not in the Word of God. And you can't know the ways of God if you're not in the Word of God and experiencing the will of God. 
It is then that you might learn some things about the ways of God. Say, so what do you mean? Well, have you ever, one, have you ever heard one, someone say, I just don't understand him. I just don't understand her. And someone that's a little bit closer says, well, I do. And it's because of this. That's just the way they are. You know what that is? They've got a better understanding. They're a little closer to the person. They know how they're thinking. They know why they're doing what they're doing. They know why they're reacting way, the way they're reacting. Because that's, they know their ways. We're creatures of habit. We have ways that we do things. God has ways that He does things. He does. God has ways that He does things. Look in Acts chapter 18, verse 24. We'll read till the end of the chapter, and then we'll make some comment tonight, and then we'll go home. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandria, an eloquent man, and mighty in the Scriptures, good man here, good man, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the Spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Alright, so he's, he's living up to the light that he's got, correct? That's what he's doing, but he's just quite not where... I mean, Paul's been given some revelation. He passes that on to Aquila and Priscilla. They come in contact with this man. He hasn't even heard of Paul as far as knowing what Paul preaches, teaches. He don't know the revelations given to Paul. All he knows is the baptism of John. But he's a good man. Look at verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God, there it is again, more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, who is that? That's Apollos. The brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, Apollos, who when he, Apollos, was come, helped them, he helped them, helped, help, uh, excuse me, helped them much which had believed through grace, for he, Apollos, mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly, Showing by the Scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Alright, so he starts out pretty good. He's a little bit off track, but he's living up to the light he's got. He gets more light, and what a blessing this man is. But notice what it says in verse 25. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. He was instructed in the way of the Lord. Now here's a man, here's a man who knows about the way of the Lord. Would you agree with that? Let's look at this man. So if a man knows about the way of the Lord and he's even instructed more perfectly or, or shown the way of God more perfectly, then you would think that that would make him a better man. Would you not agree with that? All right, let's look at, let's look at some characteristics of a man. Now, now, having said that, would you not think that if a man knows the way of the Lord, that some of that is going to rub off on him? That he's going to walk in that way? I mean, that would only make sense or else he's a hypocrite. Right? He knows he's been instructed in the way of the Lord and he's walking in that way. Walking in that way. Then he's uh, shown the way of God more perfectly and he... I'll, he eats it and he keeps on going and makes him all the better for it. All right, now let's look at this man. First of all, you see this man was instructed, verse 25, in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the Spirit. He's fervent in the Spirit of God. A man who's in the way of the Lord is fervent in the Spirit of God. That's not some charismatic Slop, phony baloney stuff that you see out there. We could go into this thing about being filled with the Spirit of God is not a man who speaks in tongues at all because it matches up with what's, what's in this passage. Look at the next phrase. And he spake and taught diligently. He spake and taught diligently. He gets his mouth open. A Spirit-filled man is a witness. This man is fervent in the Spirit of God. 
and he's got his mouth open, he begins to speak and teach diligently the things, what's it say? The things of the Lord. You know what he says? Hey, man, I was reading the other day, and boy, man, God gave me something. Let me, let me, you mind if I, you mind if I give it and share it with you? I like to talk about the Lord. Amen. I like to talk about the Bible. I know there's a time when you've got to discuss other things and all that. But I like to talk about the Bible. Sat down on Christmas Eve night, sitting there with my dad and my brother-in-law. We, talk, we got to talk some Bible a little bit. Got to spend some time with my father-in-law and that. We go driving down the road. Got to talk some Bible a little bit. I like that kind of stuff. Amen. I want to talk that kind of stuff. Amen. I want to, I want to get in the way. He's speaking diligently and teaching diligently the things of the Lord. But again, knowing only the baptism of John, but then verse 26. And he, he began to speak what? Boldly. You know what the, one of the ways of God is? Boldness. That's not this mealy mouth, you know, I don't, this soft. I'm not talking about uh, sweet spirited and that kind of stuff. You can, you can be bold as a lion. The righteous are bold as a lion, but yet you can have a gentle spirit about you. You can have a sweet spirit, but you can still tell a man, hey man, you're going to hell. I, I. You can do that. You can be bold and bring up the subject and be whatever you want to call it, couth or tactful or nice or whatever, whatever, whatever you want to call that, gracious, but you can still be bold. I believe this. I believe Jesus Christ was bold. I don't believe he's sitting there on the Mount of Olives and he's, he's trying to speak softly so some people don't hear him because he's concerned about what might happen. That's not him. Folks, don't pay no attention to Hollywood. He's, he's speaking to the multitudes. Five and six thousand at a time, three and four thousand at a time. You don't talk like I'm talking. You lift up your voice. Blessed are the poor. That's what you do. Blessed are the meek. Does that sound very meek? Well, he's got to raise his voice. He's got no PA system. You ever read John chapter 8? He goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the scribes and the Pharisees. Don't you know he knows they're, they're trying to kill him? Don't you know he knows? Listen, and they send to him, that you read in the book of Mark and, and in the book of Matthew uh, on the same accounts, but in one of those chapters, I forget which chapter it is now off the top of my head, they're hitting him with everything they got. They're sending a scribe in there. They send a Pharisee in there. They send a lawyer in there. All the while trying to catch him in his words. And he faces them eyeball to eyeball. Master. <laughs> he didn't back down. He had boldness. Then notice what else. What is that? That's the way of the Lord. That's just how he is. He is bold. All right, look at what else it is. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto him and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Now, I'm not saying that God is teachable, but a man who's in the way of God will be teachable. He won't have this attitude. Don't talk. I know what I'm talking about. I'm mighty in the scriptures. Don't you know who I am? Ain't you heard of me? Haven't you heard of my reputation? No. You know what the way of God is? Here's the way of God. You ready? Come now. Let us reason together. You got something? Let me see it. Let's talk about it. Let's reason together. Okay, that's good. I'll hold on to that. That's bad. I'll get rid of that. He's reasonable. He's teachable. He's submitting to the way of God. You get a man who's unreasonable and unteachable, you've got a problem on your hands. All right, and he says, 
and, and, and the verse there expounded them in the way of God more perfectly. Verse 27, And when he was disposed to pass unto Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much. You know what the way of God is? Come! Come ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come! Come he that is a thirst, let him drink of the water of life freely. You know what he's doing? Come, let me put my hands on you and heal you. Come, let me heal your blinded eyes. Come, let me cleanse your lepers. Come, let me raise your dead. He's just helping everywhere he went. That's just how, that's just how God is. I want to be in the way of God. I want to be bold. I want to be helpful. I want to be fervent in spirit. I want to be teachable. Notice what he says there. When he's come, help them much, which had believed through grace, for he mightily convinced the Jews. Here you go, and that publicly. Right out there in the open. Now, I could say a whole lot about that right there. But for time's sake, we won't. Showing by the Scriptures... That Jesus was Christ. You know what he did? The way he, he, he was following that book. He's following the scriptures. He never strays from the scriptures. He never parts. Everything he's saying, everything he's doing is in line with the scriptures. That's the way of God. You get a man who stands up and he says, well, the Greek says, <laughs> baloney. What Greek? Ask them that. What Greek text are you using? Most of them can't even tell you what Greek text they're talking about. Amen. Number one. Amen? Yeah, this least, yeah. <laughs> we had a chaplain tell us at one time, Brother Kunkel asked him, he kept pulling that stuff, Greek, 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 and finally Brother Kunkel said, let me ask you a question, chaplain. He said, sure. He said, what Greek text do you read? And he said, if you're familiar with the subject, you'll know this is funny. Um, uh, Nestle's. Nestle's. It ain't Nestle's. It's Nestle's. Are we talking about hot chocolate or are we talking about the Bible? <laughs> He'd be better off talking about hot chocolate. You don't stray from it. They don't stray from the scriptures. The Greek, the Greek. I'm so fed up and tired of hearing about the Greek. The originals, the originals. You've never seen the originals. Nobody alive today has ever seen the originals. How are you going to read it? How are you going to know what it says? You ain't even got a clue. Oh, but I got something right here. Oh, this precious old book right here. It's all you need. You know what you need to learn how to do? I'm done. I'm going to quit. You know what you need to learn how to do? Submit to it. You want to submit to God? You're going to have to submit to His Word. You're going to have to submit to His will. You're going to have to submit to His ways. Amen? Amen. Let's stand for prayer. I'm done.